Construction Coach here. In this video, I will show you my old garage to new studio build. Starting with making a jig to cut fiberglass insulation, easy insulation and vapor barrier, OSB sheeting on interior walls and ceiling, easy storage shelving, and studio green screen DIY. Construction coach here with your weather report. It's winter. Let's talk insulation. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make an insulation sled that's going to help you cut all your pieces. Here is the sled in use. I'm using a utility knife in the guide for effortless cutting on fiberglass or mineral wool insulation bats. Features include high visible measuring tape at each end and four adjustable heights for different bat thicknesses. Fits perfect on an adjustable set of sawhorses. Here I am using the sled to insulate this old garage. I had all my bats that didn't require cuts in position and now I'm effortlessly measuring and cutting the remaining pieces without having to use my tape measure at the sled, it really saves on time and just having everything at that perfect working height. Nice cuts. Now let's head to the shop and see how this was put together. Uh, to start, I've got uh, the larger three quarter inch piece of plywood that is four feet by three feet. I've got a two by two on each end. These are going to be, this is a 10 inch by 36 inch, same as this. These are going to be on the front and the back. And this is going to be the straight edge that helps you guide your knife perfectly into the uh, sled. So uh, well, I'm going to start by painting all these pieces up and then we'll take it into the shop for assembly because we've got to make these adjustable so that they're able to use multiple different thicknesses and densities densities of insulation in the slide. Looking for six nuts and bolts and washers for the adjustable sides. Half inch diameter will do. This is really going to make it easy on site to unbolt and use the adjustable sides. Mark out bolt pattern three inches in on each side and one in the center. Up three quarters of an inch and it will be center of the two by two behind. Clamp and drill holes. Lower side piece two inches and drill through the back this time. This will make sure of perfect alignment for all the four levels. Too bad about the plywood blowout, but I'll just touch that up with some paint when I'm finished off. I'm bolting together at the lowest setting. This setting is for two by four thickness. Next setting, two by six, then two by eight, and two by 10. It's really gonna be helpful on site to be able to switch off to the different thicknesses so easily. Here are two old Fat Max tape measures, really used to their fullest potential. Now I'm gonna cut them at 24 and an eighth inch long and select the right drill bit to screw out the tape measure end. Once I'm done, I'm gonna attach that to my sled for effortless measuring. Mark a 24 inch line from the end of the sled and attach tape measure pieces with wafer screws or pan head screws. Square line up to line up the knife guide. Now all that's left is to attach the knife guide rail. 10 inch by 50 inch, three quarter inch plywood with a saw cut down the middle, stopping the cut one inch back from the end. Cut on the table saw for best results. Then attach hinges to each side of the saw cut. Check final alignment with this square and attach 
knife guide. Perfect, some final shots of the finished piece. This insulation sled is gonna save me so much time. And like I said, my least favorite part of insulating walls is cutting all the pieces. Now let's test it out. Place insulation bat on 12 inch line. Check other end, close knife guiding fence on bat and start to cut. Once you feel the blade is through, open guiding fence. It's that simple. All right, time to put this thing to work. All of my insulation just showed up for the garage and I am going to put this sled to great use back there. We'll be insulating and installing vapor barrier in this 16 foot by 22 foot 1950s garage. All walls and rafters were framed with two by fours, Douglas fir on 16 inch on center spacing. So I ordered R12 insulation bats sized for 16 inch on center spacing in wood framing. Bat insulation for steel framing is larger, so make sure to order the right size. This is fiberglass insulation, so be sure to wear all PPE required. Here is a look at half the garage with the bats installed. I did this section without video recording because I needed to move all the things in the garage to this area so I could record the rest. This garage is going to be my new workshop with video green screen set and ample storage. Follow the whole build in the old garage playlist. Here's a look at some of the tools I'll be using. Hammer tacker, T50 staples, cordless drill, utility knife, tape measure, hammer, snips, and a particulate mask. In an old or renovation project, check all studs for nails and screws before you start. This is very important because when you get to the plastic, you don't want anything in your way. Start by inserting full bats into the bottom of the cavity. Touch the bottom plate with the bat, slightly bow bat at the top towards you and insert both top corners. Then I will move to the next one. After I have all the no cut bottom bats in, I will go through and insert the bottom by slightly bowing towards me and inserting both bottom corners. Clean up the sides, always keeping the bat bowed towards the room. Inspectors are looking for a nice full plump look, not jammed in all ununiform. Take your time. Now I will start the no cut top pieces using the same method as the bottom pieces. If the wall is eight feet high, you don't cut the bats. Set the top corners in and fill the wall. Go through and fit in the bottom corners, always keeping it plump looking as you fit in. Make sure you are tight on the joints between the bats. Time to start the cuts. I'm using my insulation sled to cut bats perfectly. Cut all pieces half inch larger than the space between the studs. In the old garage playlist, there is a DIY video on how to make an insulation sled. This is so handy for cuts and saved me so much time on cuts. I wanted the garage super secure, so I removed all windows. That's why I'm filling in the window with the bats. With the walls almost done, I will start the ceiling, working it the same as the walls. If the framing is good, the bats will friction fit in the cavities without falling out. The Baker scaffold is so good for little jobs like this. It saves me on a bunch of time going up and down ladders. I'm able to put like six bats up on the scaffolding. I'm sitting at the perfect height to insert them into the rafter spaces. It's starting to look really good in here. I'm gonna hop up and start the second row of rafter bats now. And 
Just gonna work my way to the top. Once I'm done there, I'll set up for those cuts. Now I'm up here in the gable end wall and I've got my bats going in perfectly here. I've cut a 412 slope at the top of the bat matching the slope of the roof and again going with that half inch larger in size, fitting them nice and tight and plump looking. Things are starting to really look good here and I'm about to move on to the vapor barrier. All the cavities are filled with bats. Now I'm going to fill the space above the collar ties with bats of insulation. I will run my vapor barrier on the underside of those collar ties, so I need to fill the space above. I ran some bats on the flat and filled the space above that with all my bat cutoffs. Before I can start vapor burying, I need to take care of a few last things. There was a hollow corner here, so I'm filling it with foam, and I'm just gonna spray that inside, let it expand and I'm gonna run some acoustical sealant on all other inside corners and where the concrete meets the bottom plates. This is very important to also bead all the laminated wood pieces like where the windows are, the jacks. Every space between has to be filled with acoustical sealant. I've cut the piece of six mil vapor barrier to the length of the wall plus 24 inches at each end. Create a fold three inches at the bottom and staple to bottom plate. Then start stapling up the studs, keeping the vapor barrier tight. Now the walls are looking great. I will fill that space above the collar ties with bats, like I spoke of earlier. I will run my vapor barrier across the top of the wall plate lapping the vapor barrier 16 inches then i will staple tight up the rafters to finish that vapor barrier joint i will use the proved vapor barrier sheathing tape it is important to use approved sheathing tape in my area there's been a recent change where you're no longer allowed to use the red tape it's all gone to this blue so just check what's up in your neighborhood making sure that you're following all your building codes my vapor barrier is in. This window's been sided and recovered on the outside. Um, I've tuck taped my joint where the ceiling met. It's not the ideal spot to make a uh, connection point. Uh, I've taped it two times just to make sure I've got a good seal. Now I'm just going to bring in some 3 8 OSB and sheet the ceiling. One thing I'd like to talk to you about before I carry on any further I want to know where studs are, so I'm marking out on the floor here all the studs. And I'm going to use some felt pen and mark out the ceiling joist. So as I do the ceiling, or the, the sheeting on the ceiling, I'll be able to know where the studs are against this wall. So, good idea to mark everything out before you start your sheeting. Here's a little 3 8 OSB. Now I'm going to start with the ceiling. I've got a real clever trick here where I've laid out the wall sheets first. So you see how they're helping me hold up the sheet as I start screwing it, allowing me to do sheeting by myself. So next sheet, I've added a piece against the other one to make sure that they are flush with each other and lined up on that joist. Now I'll go through and my walls are a breeze. And before I start any job, you see on the floor there where I've got the painted white lines. That's important so that I don't miss any studs. Now I'll work on that angled piece on top of, or on the wall there, the gable end. And I've got the other side laid out already on the saw horses. Now one thing with this garage is those collar ties up at the top were originally nailed in all even, unevenly. And I wanted to switch them out, but I thought after I tried taking the one out, I thought, holy, these are like in here with these long, four inch nails and Douglas fir and I thought I would do more harm to the building by trying to remove them and level them all straight. So what I'm going to do in that ceiling section there where you can see the insulation of vapor barrier still is I'm going to drop a coffer ceiling down 
and uh, kind of like put a bulkhead all the way around and I'm gonna use that to hold all my lights so if you want to see that that'll be in the old garage new studio playlist coming soon and I'm very happy that's my new green screen area um, and you can see my utility shelves on the right there so I've turned a 16 by 22 foot garage into an efficient workshop studio green screen uh, just a space that I can unwind in where you've got some talks of bringing our pool table in there and um, yeah we're gonna enjoy it with all the OSB complete it's time to start spraying the paint I'm gonna be using my Titan 330 XL paint sprayer. I just got a new tip for it, and or tip guard, and I'm gonna be spraying with it um, number six, um, SC6 Plus Titan tip, and this is gonna give me about a 12 inch fan or 12 inch spray. Here's some piston lube for the sprayer. Always important to keep the piston lubricated one last look see all my trim pieces are in at the top there uh, baseboard on nice and tight to the ground I do recommend that because you can keep a lot of insects and um, rodents out by finishing tightly down to the floor and siliconing once you're finished now because it's OSB it's gonna take a lot of paint I'm using the kills um, stain blocker and I'm going horizontally with the 12 inch spray and then vertically kind of spraying it two times I find that that's really coating it good for first coat and we chose OSB for the walls because it's much more durable than drywall we had temperature changes in the garage quite frequently and we're gonna be doing lots of projects in there, so we just thought a nice, hard, hard surface like 3.8 OSB would be much better for our situation. And um, I think it's turning out really well. It's got some texture to it, and uh, but for a garage, shop, studio, it's looking really good. Can't wait to get up in that ceiling area and finish the bulkhead off for all the lighting. That's gonna be the finale of the project for sure. Well, that, here are the easy storage shelves I built in my garage. I'm going to show you everything to build this design at your place creating great storage solutions. It is a very easy design to follow. I built sections eight feet wide. It is most economical for four by eight sheets. If you had a 24 foot wall, you would build three 8 foot sections. In this situation, I'm working with a 22 foot wall. I will use two 8 foot sections and one 6 foot filler section. I finished mine all off with these 4x8 sheets of OSB. I've added a 2x3 down each edge and used two interior door hinges on the shelf supports so a real nice way to clean it up uh, if you want that nice clean look and here in the bench area I've got some temporary cushions or lounge chair cushions just sit in here to show you like what what the setups could be when I get finished I'm gonna make some fabric cushions and fit this all in here really professional just like a restaurant booth so stay tuned for that DIY video all right, I've got the area all cleaned up. Got my OSB on the wall. You can see here I've got a three and a quarter inch baseboard that I've cut out of OSB. Fitted tight to the ground and pinching on this poly. So once I've done that, I know I'm sealed right down to the concrete. I'll probably run a bead of caulking down there once I've painted the floor. But I've got to put my baseboard on that side there and on that side there. Once that's finished, I'm going to get started with the shelving unit and I'm going to go with two 8 foot sections, one off that wall this way, one off that wall this way and what's left in the center, I'm going to make kind of a bench seating area and some shelves above that. So this is a pretty standard 
utility garage shelf I built many, many times. Here is an example of one I built years ago that had my motorcycle in the center section. This garage was 24 feet, so it worked out perfectly with three 8 foot sections. The ceiling height was 10 feet high, so I spaced my shelves at 2, 4, 6, and 8. For most economical use of the OSB or plywood, I'm ripping the shelves down to 24 inch. I will end up with 8 pieces at slightly under 24 inches. Other economical sizes would be 12 inch or 16 inches. Try to make 12, 16, or 24 inch work for the depth of your shelves to not waste plywood or OSB. Great, I have eight pieces, all cut to just under 24 inches. Now let's start fabricating the shelves. To gain the most strength for the shelves, screw the OSB or plywood to the small edge of the two by three. I use six to eight screws down the edge. When designing your shelves, you can choose larger lumber for heavier storage. I'm using two by three by eight feet long and three eighths plywood or OSB. Next step up would be two by four eight feet long and half inch plywood. For warehouse or paper storage, I have built with two by six eight feet long and three quarter inch plywood. With all the shelves fabricated, I will give this garage a quick clean and I will start attaching the two by threes to the wall as ledger boards for the shelves. If you're building freestanding shelves like this, you can use supports exactly like we're gonna show you in the front on the back to create a freestanding model. I'm spacing my shelves at two, four, and six foot high. I need a line to follow when attaching the two by threes to the wall studs. Use a four foot level or laser level to establish the line. Space your shelves at what works for you. In this garage, I got one extra because the ceiling height is 10 feet high. Time to attach the two by threes to the wall. Because I've got the studs marked on the floor, I can easily screw the two by threes to studs with three inch wood screws. In this situation, I'm putting my two eight foot sections to the outside and leaving my filler strip for the inside. Now, it's up to you what you do in that sense. You can go eight foot, eight foot, and then six foot, or you can go eight, six, and eight. Whatever works for your design. Once your ledger is attached to the wall, bring in a shelf, screw to the ledger, and use your level to figure out what's perfect, then screw to your front support, and move along to the next shelf. As I went with 2x3s, I'm adding a center support in my shelves. Sometimes this isn't required if you use 2x4s or 2x6s, but because I thought it was a little light for what we were putting on there, I wanted to prevent sagging in the shelf. The last ledger I put on a little bit lower, creating the perfect height for my bench. I can't wait to do the DIY bench section to show you guys a nice booth finished bench. Well, here it is, all finished off before the doors. Now I'm gonna go ahead and spray with my Titan 330 sprayer, a kills product on all the OSB, so there's no staining that will come through. I find when I've sprayed OSB in the past that there's always a yellow staining that will come through, so this kills helps block all the stains the paint finish turned out perfect. I used my roller to back roll areas that were a little bit thin, but now I'm ready to move on and start fitting the OSB doors to cover up the storage. 
Here's a quick look at a dry fit of the two doors. I am going to use interior door hinges and just add a two by three down each edge of the board. First one, all operational. Use the level to plumb it, make sure it's all good. Here are some final shots. And wow, nice and clean. Now I'm gonna work on that DIY bench. DIY green screen. Thanks for watching. Construction coach here. In this video, I will show you my DIY green screen. This is the coolest video trick in the book. When I finished my garage, I dedicated a wall for this green screen. I think it will really help with creating the best DIY construction videos. Follow along as I show you the perfect paint color used, lighting required to make the best video effects. Because it was a garage, I decided to finish the walls with OSB. It is really rough finish, but with the perfect color, the imperfections fade away when video editing. I use very simple video editing programs, and it seems that these baseboards, corners, and imperfections can all be edited out if the wall color and lighting are perfect. After some minor patching to the walls, it's time to lay down the green. Bare Base 1300 Premium Plus Interior Flat Mat SG430 Sparkling Apple 7037204062 for this effect. 